swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ting, on you have to. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Scores of men had gone into the Yukon in the hope of finding gold. They were men of all types, some honest, some dishonest. And there were many who had never committed a crime, but whose lust for a share of the great wealth that was being found on all sides turned their heads and distorted their thinking. Mike Kramer had a claim about 30 miles north of Dawson, where he worked hard day after day. The land adjoining his claim had been staked by Sam Nelson. Sam worked equally hard, and each night over supper compared notes in the cabin he shared with Mike. Finished weighing up your dust, Mike? Yeah, I finished. It didn't take long. Huh. Five dollars for a whole day's hard work. Five measly dollars worth of gold. Well, that's not to be sneezed at, Mike. It's five dollars more than I can show with the day's work. Oh, you're sore because I got first choice of the land. Oh, Mike, I'm not sore at all. Whatever gave you that you idea? You begrudge me what little I do get. <laughs> Sakes alive, Mike. Don't get that notion. I'm downright glad that you're doing a little bit better than what I am. You got it coming to you. After all, if it hadn't been for you, I couldn't have come to the Yukon. And if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have sold out my store and left the States. Oh. Uh, but I got only myself to blame. I should have known better than to listen to you. Yeah, should have known better. My own fault. Well, all I can do now is to hope to get enough to take me back to the States. You mean leave the Yukon? That's just what I mean. Oh, Mike, you wouldn't do that. Not after all the trouble we had getting here, getting a house built and getting a start. House? Uh, huh. Look at it. Uh, a fine place for a man to live in. One room hardly big enough to turn around. It's only until we strike it rich, Mike. Then we go back to the States and we... <laughs> oh, strike it rich. Fat chance. I'm counting on it. I'm sure I'm on the track of a good vein of pay dirt, Mike. I'll hit it sooner or later and then when... Then I... you'll be rich. So what good'll that do me? What good'll it do you? Oh, wait a minute. I savvy your scheme. You want us to pool our efforts and split what comes of it, is that it? Well, we're partners. Yeah, but not that way. <laughs> oh, that's it, eh? You take half of the cash I get and give me half of the rich strike you'll never make. I'll make it, Mike. Yeah, you do, and you can keep it. I'm keeping all I find, see? I'm not splitting with you or anyone else. All right, Mike. That's the way you want it. It's the way I want it. It's the way it's going to be. Whatever you say, Mike. Whatever you say. Each day found Mike increasingly hard to get along with. Sam tried hard to be patient and tolerant, and in the meantime worked long hours with pick and shovel, following traces that he hoped would lead to a vein of the rich gold ore. And then one evening, Mike was the first to reach the small cabin. He shoved logs into the stove to build up a fire, then crossed the room for water to make tea. What the... There was an urgency in Sam's voice when he shouted from a hundred yards away. Mike opened the door quickly and saw his friend advancing on the run. Mike! Mike, great day in the morning! Mike, wait until I show you what I've got! Calm down, Sam. Take it easy. Great guns, you look like you've seen a ghost or something. More than that, Mike. More than that, I've got it. I've struck it rich. Now, take it easy. Come on inside. Didn't you hear me, Mike? He said I've struck it rich. I've hit the pay dirt. I've found the vein. <laughs> I told you I'd find that vein sooner or later. Now I've done it. Look. Look at this sample I got in my hand. Take a look at it, Mike, real close. Don't get your hopes up, yeah. Sam. There's plenty of disappointments in this business. Plenty of disappointments is right. And I've known them all. This time I tell you I've got gold. Well, wait a minute. Let me examine this. Yeah. Let's put it to the test. Yeah. There's a bottle here on the table. Let's see what the acid does to it. Yeah, try the acid on it. Go ahead and try it. You'll see that I know gold. Now, just a minute now. 
I'm putting the acid right on this spot here. You see? You see, Mike? Why, thunder, Sam, it, it, it is gold. You're doggone right it is. You, you say you found a vein? Yes, and a rich one. Why, look at that there rock. It's darn near pure gold. And there's tons of it. Tons, I tell you. It looks like you hit it, Sam. Are you sure the vein is on your claim? Yes, and it's a big one. Oh, I wish I could tell you the vein ran towards your claim, Mike, but it goes in the other direction. <laughs> well, Sam, I, I guess you're the lucky one this time. You're going to be a rich man. Yeah, and I can't believe it. I just have to sit here and look at it and pinch myself. I just can't believe it. Well, in a couple of weeks, you'll be taking a big load of gold to Dawson. Yes, and you're coming with me, Mike. We'll put on a celebration that even Dawson will never forget. It was a few weeks later that Sam Nelson and Mike came down to Dawson. Sam had made good his promise, and the Gold Nugget Cafe rang with noise and laughter as Sam celebrated his strike. Boys, this is our night to home. Oh, this is sure some party, Sam. Here's hoping you strike gold dolphin and throw this kind of a party every time. Why, it's just starting. Well, Barney, let the boys order anything they want. It's all on me. Hey, there's Sergeant hey, Preston. Boys. You know him, don't you, Sam? Why, sure, sure I do. Hello there, Sergeant. Come on over and join us. Hello, Sam. How are you? Uh, pull up a chair, Sergeant. We're celebrating the big strike I made. I'm rich. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, Sam. You deserve it. You've worked hard. Yeah. Oh, I guess you never met my neighbor, Mike Kramer, have you? Hello, Mike. Howdy. Mike has a claim next to mine. We've been roughing it together for quite a spell. I'm the only one who'll be roughing it from now on. Uh, what do you have, Sergeant? This party's all on me. Sorry, Sam. I'm on duty. Tell me more about the strike you made. Sam brought $20,000 worth of gold into Dawson today, and it looks as if he's going to keep it up for a while. Oh, you did strike it, Rich. But you better be careful, Sam. Don't pack too much gold around on the trail. There have been a few holdups lately. Holdups? Is that so? Yes. Gosh, Sergeant Preston, some of the boys have been talking to hold us, but I didn't take it serious. I thought they were trying to worry me. Have there really been holdups along the trail? That's right, Sam. <laughs> well, holdups wouldn't bother you much, Sam. With a claim like yours, you could afford a few stick-ups. Just the same, Mike. I don't like to think about it. Some of those critters shoot to kill before they do their robbing. Now, look here, Sergeant Preston. How would it be if I waited until you come by my place before I brought down the next load of gold? Well, it's up to you, Sam. I'll feel a lot safer with you and King along his guards. Maybe six weeks before I'll be up as far as your place. Six weeks, huh? Well, that's all right. I'll have a sizable load by that time. Could wait if you're sure you'll be by my place in six weeks. Well, I'll be there unless something happens to disrupt my schedule. I've got to go to Craig's Landing. I'll come back by way of your place and pick you up. Good. I'll have a first-rate bodyguard. <laughs> I guess I'm not good enough as a bodyguard, eh, Sam? Oh, now, Mike, I didn't mean to belittle you. It's just that highwaymen might lie in wait by the trail and shoot both you and me. But they'll think twice and three times before they'll shoot a Mountie. <laughs> sore about it, Mike. I'm not sore. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You and me are pals, Mike. Oh, oh excuse me, Sam. A friend of mine just came in. A gent I want to talk to. All right. I'll be back in a little while. Meanwhile, I'll tell Sergeant Preston how I found the vein of gold. Hey, Mike, you're not leaving, are you? I'll be back. The man who had just entered the Golden Nugget Cafe had shifty eyes and a manner that would not inspire confidence. He watched from a position near the door as Mike approached. Hello, Pete. Hi, Mike. I was hoping for a chance to talk to you. I saw you come in. Well, yeah? let's get out of here where we can talk. We can stand right here and talk, can't we? I don't want to stay here as long as that Mountie's around. Come on, I got a room in the Northern Hotel. We can talk there. But they might think it's funny if I leave. Your friend's too busy celebrating. He won't miss you. You know, I got to steer clear of the law. But look, you go on back to the hotel. I'll break away a little later and come over there. I hope this is a good proposition you have. It can be worked out. The room is number 19. I'll see you in an hour. An hour later, Mike sat in the small hotel room talking earnestly to Pete. The lamp lighted Pete's face dimly through the thick cigar smoke that curled around his head. His small pig eyes narrowed as he listened. He's taken a lot of gold out of that claim. More than you ever saw in your life. Well, go on. What's on your mind? You planning to jump it? I'd sure like to, but that's impossible. 
Sam's in too well with the law around here. I thought if I told you the general scheme of things, you might have some ideas. Our little trick in Seattle worked out fine. I thought that one up. <laughs> it sure worked out. Nobody even suspected I was in on it. But they did suspect me. That's why I want to stay clear of the law. They may be looking for me. And I want to get out of this Canadian territory. These Mounties are poison. How are you fixed for money? I'm flat broke. That's why I came into Dawson today to sell my dog team. I thought you might have been in on some of these holdups they've been having lately. Maybe I was. But if you listened to the whole story, you'd have heard that people who were robbed weren't carrying enough to make it worthwhile. Well, don't sell your dog team. We'll be needing it. I'll give you enough to carry it for a while. What's it all about, Mike? My plan was to wait until Sam gets ready to make another trip down here to bank his gold. I'd come with him to help him, and I'd let you know when we were coming. Then you could stage your hold up, and I'd make it easy for you. Uh-huh. Then I'd pretend to sprain an ankle or something and delay Sam getting to Dawson. And it'd give you plenty of time to get away before the Mounties were notified. And we could have met somewhere later and divided the take. What's wrong with that plan? That Mountie just threw a monkey wrench into it. He's coming up to meet Sam and bring him back to Dawson himself. Oh, that's different. There's no chance of a holdup with him on the job. How much gold do you think Sam will be bringing? Well, that's a rich vein he struck. The Monty's coming up there in about six weeks. Mm -hmm. Sam ought to have over 20000 by then. Couldn't we just do the robbing before the Monty gets there? Ah, he'd be on our trail in no time. And he'd have my description. He'd never get to the border. This Monty seems to be pretty smart. They're all smart. But I think maybe I'm smarter. Mike, I've got a plan. We'll get the gold and we'll get out of the country. And before we're through... This Mountie will wish he'd never heard of Sam and his gold. It was about six weeks later that Sergeant Preston made his way along the trail from Craig's Landing toward Sam's cabin on the river. The weather had been clear for four days. The dogs raced over the well-packed trail. As he rounded a bend, he saw two men coming toward him. One of them was Mike Kramer. Sergeant Preston! Sure are glad to see you. Okay. Hello. You're Sam's friend Kramer, aren't you? Yeah. I didn't think you'd remember me. And this is a friend of mine, Jules Masson. Hello, Jules. Bonjour. We were starting to Craig's Landing to see if we'd get word to you. Huh? Sam's been murdered. Murdered? Yeah, we, we find him this morning. Jules and I had gone off hunting. We were away three days. When we got back, we stopped off to give Sam some caribou meat and found him dead in his cabin. He'd been robbed. Every speck of his gold gone. Someone has shoot him from the back through window. Did you see Sam before you left on this hunting trip? We. Oui. He tell us to be sure to bring him back something that tastes like fresh meat. Anyone with him while you were away? No, he was all alone. I can't think who'd do a thing like that, Sergeant. Everybody likes Sam. Mike is Sam's best friend. Yes, this must be a shock to you, Mike. It sure is. I planned to go to Dawson with you and Sam as soon as you came. Poor Sam. Now that he was rich and planning to take it easy, this had to happen. Did you leave the cabin just as you found it? Oh, sure, Sergeant. We knew you'd be coming, so we didn't touch a thing. Good. Let's go back to Sam's cabin right away. When Sergeant Preston stopped his team in front of Sam's cabin, King, his big lead dog, walked to his side toward the door. Mike looked at King in surprise. Your lead dog coming in with you, Sergeant? Yes, King always comes with me, unless I tell him to stay with the team. What's the idea of that? Has Sam ever told you about King? No. Is he famous or something? A very intelligent dog. I need his help at times. Except for pulling the sled. I can't see much use for much. I guess you don't know much about dogs, Mike. That, that King is big fella. I bet he's a good fighter, no? He doesn't fight unless he has to. Then he does a good job of it. Now, let's take a look inside. Cabin's cold. We didn't stop to light a fire. Well, there's Sam. Just the way we found him. Body's frozen. He must have been killed yesterday or the day before. There wasn't even a spark of fire left in the stove. Shot in the back of the head. From window back there. You see? Oil paper torn out. That's where the shot came from, all right. Help me get Sam's body up on that cot. 
Take his feet, Mike. Oh, sure. That's it. There. Oh, poor Sam. I'd like to get my hands on the polecat who did this. Sam, he he was your best friend. Yeah. Do you know where Sam kept his gold, Mike? Oh, yeah. That's how I knew he was robbed. Sam wasn't very smart about hiding it. He kept it in that big chest. The padlock is smashed. Oh. That's not too smart place for to hide it. I told him that. But Sam had the crazy idea that nobody around here would rob him. He wouldn't even have locked the chest if I hadn't made him. I'm going outside and look around. Come along, King. <laughs> You'll find the murderous tracks. Jules and I look. It's been clear for four days. Yes, here are the tracks coming around the cabin and going back again. We were careful not to cover them. Uh, Jules and I walked over there. Glad you didn't disturb them. Do you see the mark on his right boot heel track? As if a nail or something was on the heel. Yes. He won't be hard to trail. His tracks lead over to that clump of bushes there. Let's see what's over there. Now, this man not know much about woods. He would cover track better if he knew. Right, Jules. Must be very stupid to leave such a clear trail. Guess where he left his dog team. Wonder why he didn't leave it on the trail where the snow was packed down. Right. This track, it is like riding in the snow. Certainly shows which direction he took. So plain, it almost looks as if he wanted to be followed. He probably thought it would snow and his tracks would be covered before anyone found Sam. No. On such clear nights as we had, even a fool would know it would not snow. king has got the scent. Come here, King. You're going to follow his trail, aren't you, Sergeant? Yes, of course, but I'll have to get supplies from the trading post first. Sergeant, would it be asking too much to take me with you when you trail the murderer? Sam was my best friend, and I won't sleep nights until a man is caught. Why, no, Mike. I'd like to have you come with me if you want to. It is right you should go, Mike. You and Sam, you were you were like brothers. You and Jules take care of Sam's body, Mike. I'll be back as soon as I can. We'll start on the trail. Come along, King. All right. On, King. On, King. Uh, this track. It is funny thing the killer would leave such clear trail. <laughs> Why you laugh, Mike? You are so sad when we find Sam. Oh, I am sad, Mike. I'm just laughing at how easy the murderer made it for us to track him. Why, the sergeant and I should catch up with him in no time at all. Sergeant Preston returned a short time later. Then he and Mike set out to trail the murderer. King led the team at a fast pace along the well-packed trail. Soon, however, the tracks branched off of the main trail and led northwest into the wilderness. Heading northwest, trying to make the border. We've made good time. These dogs here are fast. I'm all tired out. It's getting dark, but we'll keep going as long as possible. Maybe we'll find a cabin somewhere and hold in for a few hours later on. It was a few hours later that Sergeant Preston and Mike found a cabin near the trail. The owner had left, but the door was unlocked and a fire was set in the stove. The Mountie and Mike went to bed immediately after eating. Oh, I'm dead tired. I'll sure sleep. I'm tired, too. Hey, you want me to put King outside? No, King always sleeps beside my bed. You mean you let him stay in the cabin all night? That's what I mean. Well, good night, Sergeant. Good night, Mike. I'll blow out the lamp. Sergeant Preston fell into a sound, dreamless sleep. Two hours passed, and then suddenly he was awakened by King's growling. Shut up, you mark! Mike, what's wrong? Why, uh, that dog of yours don't sleep very sound, does he? Why was he growling? I just got up to get a drink of water. Well, that's odd. I don't see why he'd growl at you. What's wrong, King? Maybe he heard someone prowling around the cabin or something. Someone out there, fella? Maybe we'd better have a look. Do you hear something out here, boy? He won't go out. Guess that wasn't it. I guess he was just dreaming. Maybe he was growling in his sleep. Didn't sound like it. Well, maybe I scared him moving around in the dark. There are times when I wish King could talk. Well, he's quiet now. I guess there's nothing to worry about. Guess not. Well, we'd better get some more sleep. The following morning, Sergeant Preston looked carefully for tracks around the cabin, but found none. When the dogs were harnessed, he ordered King up front. Up front, boy. Go on, King. King, what's wrong with you? You ask me, he needs a taste of the whip. For some reason or other, he doesn't seem to want to leave me. 
King, up front, I say. The big dog sensed that his master was in danger. He barked and whined, but finally, after a sharp command, took his place at the head of the team. On King! On Husky! The weather stayed clear, and the tracks of the man they were pursuing were plain and easy to follow. It was later in the day, and they were going along fast, when suddenly a snowshoe rabbit darted out ahead of them on the trail. Mike quickly jerked up his rifle and fired. Well, there, uh, oh. Mike, you fool, you hit King. What? Oh, no, Sergeant, I missed him by a mile. Come here, King. Hold still a minute, boy. There, you see, his ear is bleeding. You nicked it. Oh, gosh, Sergeant, I'm sorry. I, I've always been a good shot. You weren't good enough to hit that rabbit. Now, after this, don't shoot at anything in front of my dog team, understand? I... I can't tell you how sorry I am, Sergeant. It was an accident. That rabbit came out on the trail so fast, I didn't have time to think. Well, I guess it was an accident. Sorry I lost my temper, but next time be careful. It was late that night when they finally made camp out in the wilderness. Sergeant Preston knew by the tracks that they were rapidly gaining on the killer. We should catch up with him by tomorrow... We'll make camp here and then get an early start. We've done some fast traveling. It's lucky for us this weather held out. It made the trail easy to follow. I'll get the fire started. All right, Mike. Oh, uh, we'll need some more wood. I'll cut some. Come along, King. As the sergeant started to chop a log, King lay quietly in the shadow of a clump of bushes. Though it was dark, the snow reflected the pale glow of the northern lights, and he could watch his master. And suddenly, his ears prepped forward as he heard a slight movement in the trees behind the bounty. King lifted his nose and then launched his body forward into the trees. There was a sudden thud and cry. Help! Preston, help! This dog, take him away! King, Blackfellow, get away, boy. Get away. What's the meaning of this, Mike? Call this dog off. Hold him while I get up. Leave that gun where it is. Tell me what happened. I was just coming to help you. I thought you'd need some help bringing back the wood in this crazy mutt knocked me down and attacked. King never attacks anyone without a reason. Well, he never liked me from the beginning. Dogs are like that. They take a dislike to people for no reason at all. They often have a very good reason. Why were you carrying a rifle when you came to help me bring back wood? Well, walking here in the woods, I was afraid some animal... You'd better start telling the truth, Mike. The truth? What do you mean? You deliberately tried to kill King earlier today... Were you trying to do it again, or was I going to be the target this time? Oh, Sergeant Preston, you're crazy. It was all harmless. Do you think I'd try to keep you from catching Sam's murderer? Sam was my best friend. I was just coming to help you, and you couldn't hear me because you were chopping wood. Maybe King thought I was going to hurt you or something. King doesn't make mistakes like that, Mike. Well, this time he could have. I was walking towards you behind this clump of trees. Could easily have looked as if I meant to harm you or something. I suppose it could have been another accident. Oh, sure it was. Just like this afternoon. I can't afford to take any chances. What do you mean? For some reason, King doesn't trust you. He hasn't wanted to leave my side since we started out. But it doesn't make sense. He hasn't any reason. It would make sense if you knew who killed Sam and wanted to keep me from catching him. But why would I want to do that? Sam was my best friend. What good would it do me if you didn't catch the killer? The man who murdered Sam left a very clear trail behind him. He may have left it purposely so that you could follow it after getting rid of me. But neither one of you knew about King. Sergeant, I swear you're wrong. I want to catch the man as much as you do. Yes, Mike, I may be wrong. But nevertheless, I'm going to handcuff you. What? Until we catch this killer, I want to know exactly what you're doing all the time. You'll ride the sled handcuffed to it. But... You, you can't do that. It'll, it'll slow us down. You aren't very heavy. Oh, please, Sergeant, you're wrong, I tell you. You'll be sorry. Don't waste your breath, Mike. It's the way it's going to be, and nothing you can say will change it. The following day, the chase continued with Mike riding on the sled, his hands firmly handcuffed to the sides. The country grew wilder as they headed northwest. Huge rocks bordered the sides of the trail, and there were no tracks except those of the killer they were pursuing. The sky was clear, and the setting sun cast a glare into their eyes, making it hard to see ahead. And then suddenly, as they approached some rocks, a shot rang out. Oh! And Sergeant Preston staggered and fell. The dog team halted in confusion. And then King saw a man come from behind the rocks, running toward the sled. The dogs were barking furiously, so the man couldn't hear what Mike was shouting. Hey, Pete! Pete, look out! Look out for that dog! King got the scent of the man they had been trailing and knew he was the one who had shot his master. With a rush, the great dog was upon him, sending him sprawling into the snow, his rifle flying from his hand. Get out of you, Mike! Mike, help! Help me! I 
can't help you. I'm handcuffed to this sled. If I move, you'll kill me. Mike, you've got to help me. The Mountie's the only one who can call him off. Why didn't you warn me about this dog? I didn't know about him when we made our plans. King wanted to go to his master, who lay on the trail back of the sled. But he knew he couldn't leave this man he had been trailing. He stood over him, growling viciously every time Pete made a move. And Pete, terrified by the dog's strength, finally lay still and helpless. Then King saw Sergeant Preston make a slight movement. Slowly and painfully, the Mountie raised his head. A trickle of blood ran down his cheek from under his parka hood. Pete, from where he lay, could see him too. Mike, you have to do something. I didn't kill the Mountie. He's moving. What can I do? These handcuffs. My rifle isn't far from the sled. Can't you reach it with your foot and pull it towards you? Yeah, I'll try. I, I can almost reach it. If I can get it close enough, I... Oh, no, no, it's no use. It's no use, Pete. Sergeant Preston pulled himself to a sitting position. The snow around him seemed to whirl in a dizzy pattern. There was a blinding pain in his head. Then slowly his vision began to clear. He heard a sharp bark from King that seemed to pierce the fog that enveloped him. And he turned toward the sound. King... It's King. Mike, he's conscious. Mush, mush, you huskies. Mush, I say. No, no, Mike, don't leave me. Mush, mush there. Sergeant Preston's dog team heard Mike's command, but waited for their leader and refused to move. And then Sergeant Preston slowly rose to his feet. On guard, King. Watch him, boy. Hold him. Call off this dog before he kills me. Don't move and you won't get hurt. Guard him, King. Sergeant Preston, there's the man who killed Sam. I didn't have anything to do with it. He tried to kill you, too. He's wanted by the law. Why, you double cross on skunk? I have his gun, King. Let him up and watch him, boy. Uh, Pete is the murderer, Sergeant. Get up, Pete, but don't try to run. Mike was in on this, too. He planned the whole thing. He's lying, Sergeant. No, he isn't lying, Mike. Your plan was to murder me on the trail. If he hadn't been yellow, he'd have done it. It was King who saved me. Save me from... Now walk ahead of the team till we come to your camp. I can ride the runners. Remember, my dog will be right behind you, so be careful. Sergeant Preston was weak and dizzy from the wound on his head, but he clung to the handlebars of the sled as it moved slowly to the spot where Pete had made camp on the trail. Oh, King! Oh, 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 oh. While King guarded Pete, the sergeant investigated the contents of the pack on Pete's sled. The gold you stole from Sam is here, Pete. You and Mike are under arrest in the name of the Queen for robbery and murder. I tell you, Sergeant, I'm innocent. I see now what your plan was. Pete purposely left a clear trail to follow. You know no other mounted policeman to be put on the case while I was on it. So you planned to kill me on the trail and give yourselves that much more time to get to the border. We'd have done it, too, if I'd known about that dog. I could have plugged him first. But you didn't plug him first. And as a result of your oversight, this case is closed. <laughs> Now, here's Sergeant Preston with a preview of our next adventure, The Case of the Beautiful Swindler. The case began when I tried to settle a quarrel between two brothers named Jack and Steve Conway. Jack was engaged to a beautiful dance hall girl, but Steve claimed that she was trying to swindle his brother out of a valuable claim. King and I set out to investigate Steve's charges and wound up in a narrow scrape with death that still gives me a chill whenever I think about it. Be sure to listen to this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Wednesday until September, when we shall resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcasts. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck till next Wednesday. So long.